When I decided to have weight loss surgery, my mindset going into this journey has been completely different based off of any other journeys I've done. And this is probably why I am my most successful and I'm gonna continue to be successful. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, hi, my name is Janae. I make a lot of content centered around wellness, self-development, and becoming your best self both internally and externally. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, like this video if you like self-development content, and comment down below some of your best self-development tips books, podcasts, let me know all the tea down in the comments below. So in today's video, I wanted to talk about how to heal your relationship with food and how you know you healed your relationship with food after weight loss surgery. So there has been a lot of chatter about food choices over on TikTok, which if you're not following me on TikTok, go ahead and follow me. We have a lot of these type of conversations over there. But there has been a lot of controversy and hot takes and conversations around food choices, whether that's drinking after weight loss surgery, fast food, celebratory food, desserts, all of that stuff. And it made me start thinking about my own food choices and my relationship with food. And if you want me to talk about alcohol after weight loss surgery, fast food after weight loss surgery, let me know in the comments below because I definitely have some thoughts about that. So I no longer restrict myself when it comes to any food groups, food choices, anything. I've been on a weight loss journey for over 13 years and I have done every diet you probably could diet. Some very restrictive, some more relaxed. I've abused fitness a lot. I've my history with weight loss is extensive. So when I decided to have weight loss surgery, my mindset going into this journey has been completely different based off of any other journeys I've done. And this is probably why I am my most successful and I'm gonna continue to be successful. And the bottom line comes down to healing your relationship with food. So let's get into how to heal your relationship with food. Let's start with identifying your problem with food. And this can be multiple things. For me, because of all of the restrictive dieting I've done, I developed a binge eating disorder. And a lot of us are developing one. I would also overeat and eat until I was beyond full. And this wasn't just on junk food, this was healthy food. I lived a very clean life when it came to my food. Yes, I indulge, but majority of the time on my 13 year weight loss journey, I was eating healthy because I wanted to lose weight. But I would overeat at every meal, at every snack, at every liquid, I would overdo it. And here's the thing with weight gain, people are so fixated on your food choices that they don't even realize it's not just about that. Most of the time, it's about the quantity of food that you're intaking. At a foundational level, it's about calories in versus calories out, which will control weight gain or weight loss. And so for me, I was intaking too many calories. Lastly, I also was an emotional eater and a boredom eater. So how did weight loss surgery fix those things? For overeating, I had the gastric sleeve and I literally couldn't eat past a certain point. I remember during my liquid diet, which if you haven't watched my liquid diet video, I'll link it in the cards above. On my month long liquid diet, I drank too many liquids at one time on accident and I made myself so uncomfortably stuff. It was literally on accident. We were out and about. I didn't bring any liquids with me and I started to feel a little fatigued. And so I was drinking like every Gatorade, water. I still wasn't satiated. So I had some soup. Then I had a little more soup in like a 30 minute time span. And once everything settled, oh my God, I wanted to cry. I think I did cry for the rest of the night and I actually forced myself to vomit just to relieve the pressure. And since then, I knew not to eat until I was full and stuff, but just to consume things until I was satiated. And I live by that because I never wanna feel that again. When it comes to binge eating, and this is of course after you move through the food stages and you're able to tolerate foods more, I couldn't eat a whole bunch of food. And because of that, I wasn't really worried about my food choices. This allowed me to figure out what my body can tolerate again, because after weight loss surgery, you will realize that there's some things 
that you was able to eat before, you was able to drink before, and then now things have changed. The two things for me, and still is sometimes an issue, is Greek yogurt and raw vegetables. So once I was able to tolerate foods more, I was in my testing phase. I was seeing what can my body tolerate? What grains I can eat? What meats I can eat? What vegetables I can eat? How can I eat these things? And because of that, I wasn't avoiding a food group. Like I know a lot of us are low carb and I wasn't avoiding different choices when it came to fruit. Like I'm telling you, I was so obsessed with it. I wouldn't allow myself to have cantaloupe or pineapple, things that I love. I would only stick to berries because I knew that that was low carb. Ridiculous. Once I started testing out the different foods and realizing I'm not gaining weight, yes, because I can't eat a lot of foods, but I'm not gaining weight because of these different food choices. They're, they're non-factor. Like I'm in taking food that makes me happy, that's nourishing my body, and I'm still losing weight. And this is when moderation and balance started to work its way into my weight loss surgery journey. Now, when it comes to emotional eating and boredom eating, this is still a work in progress. And honestly, I think that it's going to continue to be. This is when leaning on your healthcare providers will come into play. If you are an emotional eater, go ahead and seek therapy, specifically someone who deals with food or bariatrics and talk to them and start digging in to see where that link is coming from. Ask your healthcare providers about weight loss medication. I was taking Contrave, which is a weight loss medication, and that was helping with the food noise. And that also helped with my boredom eating. So there are things out there, utilize your resources. You're paying for them anyway. If you have insurance, you're paying for it anyway. Utilize your resources and get the help and don't be afraid to get the help. A lot of us feel like we had this weight loss surgery and that's it. We should be grateful that we got this and we lost the weight, but no, this is still going to be a lifelong process. If you want to sustain your success, ask for help when you need it. But because I worked on those other two things, it has helped manage my emotional and boredom eating. I don't look to food for comfort. I don't even have any comfort foods anymore. My celebrations still involve food, but they're not food focused. And that is a big difference. Now that we talked about how to heal your relationship with foods, let's talk about how you know you healed your relationship with food. And this is based off of all of my own experience. So some examples I'm gonna give to you may look different for you. You know that you healed your relationship with food when you're not running to food when you feel in an emotion, no matter what emotion that is. For me, whether I was happy, sad, angry, no matter what that emotion I was feeling, there was something in my hand and in my mouth to help go with that emotion. You know you healed your relationship with food when you're not thinking about your next meal as you're eating your current meal. I know, fat girl problems, but it literally was a thing for me. You know you healed your relationship with food when you're not using fitness as punishment for your food choices. At one point, I was sitting there doing two, three hours, not because I enjoyed it, but because I was trying to burn as many calories as I possibly could, or I would work out in the day, but then also go and work out at night because throughout the day, I made a poor food choice. Like, just ridiculous. You know you healed your relationship with food when you're not using laxatives and teas and juice cleanse to help cope with the food choices you made. I did a lot of this when I was in the army and my time in the army is where a lot of my food issues came from and I don't think I ever did a video and talked about that. So let me know in the comments below if you want to know my military experience and pretty much how it made me fat and where I am today. You know you healed your relationship with food when you're no longer looking at certain meals as cheat meals or cheat snacks. What exactly are you cheating on? The point is to live a life of balance. Of course, we're not going to be eating clean 100% of the time. There are gonna be times where life is life in, or we're celebrating things, or we just want to have something. Why should we look at it as a cheat meal? Live your life, live it with balance, live it with moderation. I try to stick to a 90% clean and 10% living when it comes to my food. It's 
a lifestyle for me and I don't have to look at it as a cheat meal. I'm gonna enjoy my life and I'm gonna get right back on it the very next meal or the very next day or whatever the case may be. You know you healed your relationship with food when you're not scared of special occasions because of the food that's gonna be associated with it. So you find yourself not wanting to enjoy your anniversaries, birthdays, going to friends events, going to cookouts because you can't control the food that's being made. Again, back to my cheat meals. Live your life, sis. I look at it like this. If one bite or one meal of something is going to make me spiral out of control and go on a full day binge, a full week binge, then I need to go back to the first part of this video and continue to work on my relationship with food. Because to me, that says that there is a separate issue that's going on that's outside of the food choice. Because like I said, again, I used to go crazy on healthy stuff. So there's something more internally, mentally, that's going on than the food that's going in my mouth. The point of weight loss surgery for me was to lose weight, but to also live a semi-normal life. And I know my life is still going to involve drinking, fast food, desserts, celebrating, cookouts. Like, I don't want to miss out on those things. And now I don't have to because of the work that I put in. I hope this video was helpful to you ladies. I just wanted to give you some tips and tricks on how to know if you healed your relationship with food and how to go about it if you want to start healing that relationship. You can connect with me over on my TikTok or my Instagram. This is where we're having these type of conversations in the moment. You can definitely hit me up in my comments a lot more over there. So go ahead and follow me. I would love to continue this conversation down in the comments below right here. How did you heal your relationship with food? What are some tips that you did that can possibly help someone else and also help me? So let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up, share it with someone who needs it. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and hit that bell icon that way you're notified every single time I post a new video. I hope you ladies have a fantastic day. And if you're watching this on Valentine's Day, happy Valentine's Day, happy Galentine's Day to you, girl. Enjoy your meals, enjoy your drinks today and get back on it. And I'll see you ladies in my next video. Bye, girly. Bye. Thank you.